Cells are organized into tissues, groups of cells with a similar appearance and function. Different types of tissues are further organized into functional units called organs. Groups of organs that work together, make up an organ system. The most complex level of organization is the organism level where all organ systems function in the animals or plants. Levels of Organization When building a city, you start with bricks. Many bricks joined together makes a wall. Walls working together make a building, and many buildings complete the city. The human body is put together in a similar way. Humans start with cells. Many cells joined together make tissue. Tissue working together make an organ. And many organs make an organ system. In subtopic 2.3, we will explore about various types of plant and animal tissues. There are two learning outcomes for animal tissues. At the end of the lesson, students should be able to describe and explain the four types of animal tissues. Start with epithelial tissues, nerve tissues, muscle tissues and the last one is connective tissues. Tissues is defined as a group of similar cells that are joined together for a specific function. There are four types of animal tissues. Epithelial tissues, nerve tissues, muscle tissues and connective tissues. Epithelial tissues cover the outside of the body and line organs and cavities within the body. Nervous tissue functions in the transmission of impulse. The tissue responsible for nearly all types of body movement is muscle tissue. Major functions of connective tissue include binding and supporting, protecting, insulating, storing reserve fuel, and transporting substances within the body. The following are main characteristics of epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue is composed of cells laid together in sheets with the cells are closely packed, often with tight junctions. Epithelial layers are avascular. All epithelial cells have two different sides. The free apical surface faces the lumen or body cavity or outside of the organ. Specialized projections such as microvilli and cilia often cover the free apical surface. The opposite side of each epithelium is attached to the basal or basement membrane. Covering and lining epithelial tissue forms the outer layer of the skin, lines open cavities of the digestive and respiratory systems and covers the walls of organs. Glandular epithelial tissue surrounds glands within the body. Epithelial tissue has two names. The first name indicates the number of cell layers, the second describes the shape of its cell. Based on the number of cell layers, epithelia can either be simple or stratified. Simple epithelial consists of a single cell layer while stratified epithelial are composed of two or more cell layers stacked on top of each other. Based on the cell shape, epithelial tissue is classified into squamous cuboidal and columnar. Squamous epithelial cells appear as thin, flattened shaped cells with an oval shaped nucleus. Cuboidal epithelial cells are square or cube shaped cells, having a similar width to height ratio. The nucleus is large, round and centrally located. Columnar epithelial cells have a rectangular or column shape, meaning that they are taller than they are wide. The elongated nucleus is usually located near to the basement membrane. Figure B shows the structure of simple squamous epithelial tissue as seen under microscope. This type of epithelium forms thin, delicate sheets of cells through which molecules can easily pass by diffusion or filtration. Simple squamous epithelium can be found lining capillaries, inside of blood vessels, 
alveoli of the lungs, glomerulus of the kidneys, and the heart. Figure A shows the structure of simple squamous epithelial tissue as seen under microscope. This type of epithelium offers greater protection than simple squamous due to its increased thickness. It also has secretory, absorptive and excretory functions. Simple cuboidal epithelium is found in the ducts of the salivary glands, liver, pancreas, thyroid glands and kidney tubules. Figure B shows the structure of simple columnar epithelial tissue as seen under microscope. Similar to cuboidal, it can have protection, secretion, absorption and excretion functions. This epithelium often has apical specializations such as microvilli or cilia which enhance its absorptive function. Simple columnar epithelium can be found in the walls of the stomach, intestines and gallbladder. Figure B shows the structure of stratified squamous epithelial tissue as seen under microscope. Multiple layers of flat squamous epithelia which provide protection against abrasion and water loss. It lines the oral cavity, esophagus, larynx, vagina, anal canal, and the outer layer of the cornea. Figure B shows the structure of stratified cuboidal epithelial tissue as seen under microscope. This kind of tissue functions as a protective tissue layer. It lines the excretory ducts of the sweat glands and large ducts of excretory glands. Figure B shows the structure of stratified columnar epithelial tissue as seen under microscope. It has the secretion and protective functions. Examples of where this epithelial type can be found includes, the eye and in the largest ducts of exocrine glands. The nervous system is formed by the nervous tissue, which is distributed throughout the body as an integrated network of neurons assisted by neuroglial cells. The various types of glial cells support and protect neurons include insulation of neurons and their processes to accelerate transmission of nerve impulses and participation in the metabolic exchange between blood vessels and the neurons. Neurons are highly specialized nerve cells that generate and conduct nerve impulse. Schwann cells are neuroglia cells that support neuronal function by increasing the speed of impulse propagation. A typical neuron consists of dendrites, the cell body, and an axon. Dendrites are responsible for responding to stimuli. They receive incoming impulse towards the cell body. The axons are responsible for transmitting impulses from cell body. The cell body is like a factory for the neuron. It produces all the proteins and contains specialized organelles such as nucleus, granules and nistle bodies. The tissue responsible for nearly all types of body movement is muscle tissue. There are three types of muscle tissue in the vertebrate body. Smooth, skeletal or striated and cardiac muscle tissues. Each of these types of muscle tissue has muscle fibers. Smooth muscle, which lacks striations, is found in the walls of the digestive tract, urinary bladder arteries, and other internal organs. The cells are spindle-shaped. Skeletal muscle consists of bundles of long, cylindrical cells that are called muscle fibers. Each muscle fiber of skeletal muscle is multinucleated. The arrangement of sarcomeres along the muscle fibers gives the cells striated appearance. Cardiac muscle is striated like skeletal muscle but, unlike skeletal muscle, Cardiac muscle has branched fibers that interconnected via intercalated discs. Smooth muscle is found in the walls of the digestive tract, urinary bladder, arteries, and other internal organs. 
Smooth muscles are responsible for involuntary movements such as peristaltic activity in digestive system and constriction of arteries. Attached to bones by tendons, skeletal or striated muscle is responsible for voluntary body movements. They are called skeletal muscles because they are attached to the skeletal bones. They are also known as striated muscles because under a microscope they appear striated. Cardiac muscle forms the contractile wall of heart. Intercalated disc relay impulse from cell to cell and help synchronize heart contraction. As the name implies, connective tissue serves a connecting function. It supports and binds other tissues in the body. Connective tissue fills the spaces between organs and tissues, also provides structural and metabolic support for other tissues and organs. Connective tissue is made up of cells scattered throughout an extracellular matrix of fibrous proteins and glycoproteins, attached to a basement membrane. The primary elements of connective tissue include a ground substance, fibers, and cells. The ground substance acts as a fluid matrix that suspends the cells and the fibers. Fibers and matrix are synthesized by specialized cells called fibroblasts. There are three main groups of connective tissues. Loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue, and specialized connective tissue. In our matriculation syllabus, we only emphasize on the specialized connective tissues. Examples include hyaline cartilage, compact bone and blood. Bone is a type of mineralized connective tissue that contains collagen and calcium phosphate. There are two types of bone tissue, spongy and compact. Compact bone is strong, dense, and forms the hard outer bone surface. Cartilage is a form of fibrous connective tissue that is composed of closely packed collagenous fibers in a rubbery gelatinous substance called chondrin. The skeletons of sharks and human embryos are composed of cartilage. Cartilage also provides flexible support for certain structures in adult humans. Hyaline cartilage is the most common type of cartilage. Blood is also considered to be a type of connective tissue. Blood connect other organ systems together by supplying them with nutrients and transporting signal molecules such as hormones between cells. Connective tissues perform many functions in the body. The most important function is to support and connect other tissues. Protection is another major function of connective tissue. For example, bones that protect delicate organs. Specialized cells in connective tissue such as leukocytes, defend the body from being attacked by pathogens. Transport of fluid, nutrients, waste and chemical messengers or hormones is ensured by blood and lymph. Adipose cells store surplus energy in the form of fat and contribute to the thermal insulation of the body. The microscopic structural unit of compact bone is called an ostean, or haversion system. Each ostean is composed of concentric rings of calcified matrix called lamella or singular is lamella. Running down the center of each ostean is the central canal, or haversion canal, which contains blood vessels, nerves, and lymphatic vessels. These vessels and nerves branch off through a perforating canal, known as Folkman's canals. The bone cell known as osteocytes are located inside spaces called lacunae or singular is lacuna. Lacunae are found at the borders of adjacent lamella. Osteocytes can communicate with each other, receive nutrients and remove waste through canaliculi or singular is canaliculus. In adults, hyaline cartilage forms the articular surfaces of long bones, the rib tips, the rings of the trachea, and parts of the skull. It also occurs under the skin for instance, ears and nose and on many joint surfaces. The primary cell types are chondrocytes. 
They lie in spaces called lacunae with up to eight chondrocytes located in each. Chondrocytes rely on diffusion to obtain nutrients as, unlike bone, cartilage is avascular, meaning there are no vessels to carry blood to cartilage tissue. Blood is a body fluid that has four main components. Plasma, red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. The blood that runs through the veins, arteries, and capillaries is a mixture of about 55% plasma and 45% blood cells. The liquid component of blood is called plasma, a mixture of water, sugar, fat, protein, and salts. Plasma transport blood cells throughout our body along with nutrients, waste products, antibodies, clotting proteins, chemical messengers such as hormones, and proteins. Red blood cells also called erythrocytes, are the most abundant cell in the blood. The shape of the red blood cell is a biconcave disc. Red blood cells have no nucleus and can easily change shape, helping them fit through the various blood vessels in our body. Red blood cells contain a special protein called hemoglobin. White blood cells or leukocytes, are much fewer in number than red blood cells. They are also larger than erythrocytes and, possessing nucleus and organelles. Unlike red and white blood cells, platelets are not actually cells, but rather small fragments of cytoplasm of a cell that is surrounded by plasma membrane. Red blood cells contain hemoglobin, which helps carry oxygen from the lungs to the rest of the body and, returns carbon dioxide from the body to the lungs, so it can be exhaled. White blood cells protect the body from infection. Leukocytes protect the body against invading microorganisms and body cells with mutated DNA, and they clean up debris. Platelets are critical to homeostasis the stoppage of blood flow following damage to a vessel. They also secrete a variety of growth factors essential for growth and repair of tissue, particularly connective tissue. Leukocytes could be divided into two groups, according to whether their cytoplasm contained highly visible granules. Granular leukocytes contain abundant granules within the cytoplasm. They include neutrophils, eosinophils, and basophils. While in the granular leukocytes, granules are far fewer and less obvious. A granular leukocytes include monocytes and lymphocytes. Granular leukocytes typically have lobed nucleus. In a granular leukocytes the nucleus is simple in shape, without distinct lobes. Monocytes, which mature into macrophages will phagocytize debris foreign pathogens, worn-out erythrocytes, and many other dead, worn-out, or damaged cells. The three major groups of lymphocytes include natural killer cells, B cells, and T cells. Natural killer cells are capable of recognizing cells that do not express self-proteins on their plasma membrane. These non-self cells include cancer cells and cells infected with the virus. B cells and T cells also called B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes, play prominent roles in defending the body against specific pathogens and are involved in specific immunity. One form of B cells, plasma cells produces the antibodies or immunoglobulins. T cells physically attacking foreign or diseased cells. It's quiz time. You may check your understanding by answering questions on the next five slides. Identify the types of animal tissues A, B, C and D. Which of the following tissues involved in gaseous exchange? Please choose only one answer. Try to find out the labels A to G. Name the muscle tissues A, B and C. Let's review about the types of connective tissues. For further information, 
students may refer to these widely used reference books, either Biology Campbell or Solomon of any latest edition.